What's going on everybody? Silas here today and we're off on another adventure. It flat poured down rain last night. Not so much last night, but yesterday evening. It was a pretty severe storm rolled through. We lost power. We were out of power for I forget how long. It was several hours. Didn't really lose any tree limbs. Didn't have a whole lot of wind, which was good. I know to the uh, southwest of us, they had a bunch of severe winds came through in a storm they had. And uh, they lost a bunch of trees and stuff like that. A lot of damage to cars. So fortunately, we dodged all that and we did get some rain that we needed desperately. We're still in a severe drought. One rain isn't going to fix anything, but it's a start. But anyway, in the short term, one of the benefits is now the dust out there at my place isn't going to be so bad. Uh, you might be able to hear it in my voice. After being out there for the last week and a half crushing cars, my voice has just about had it because that dust is just blowing everywhere and it, it's, it's miserable out there sometimes. I've got a guy at the yard waiting on me now and we're going to load up some old cars and we have to load them into a box van, a box trailer, I mean not a van, but a box trailer and they're big trucks and so uh, <laughs> I don't know how this is going to work out yet. I just now noticed the Stuart Warner speedometer in here. Motor miles is what it says on there. It's a cool old federal. I think what we're going to do is take this put it in the back of that grain truck in that trailer but I don't know if it's going to be it's going to fit height wise we're going to measure and find out Okay, got him loaded up, got the crush cars loaded up, and now they're here to load up a load of aluminum wheels and tires. All of these, or as many will, anyway, will fit right in there. He'll take them, dismount them all, bring the wheels back. And a lot of these are good tires, and so we're just going to give them the good tires. Because all I would do with them is shove them in cars, so it'd be good for both of us. Okay, I just got the second load of cars loaded. Uh, the first load weighed just under 16 tons. They've been coming out around 16 tons. One load that I loaded yesterday, or two days ago actually, was uh, actually 18 tons, but every other load's been about 16 tons. The load he just hauled might be another heavy one because I put a bunch of stuff at the back of it. I had that fifth wheel plate and I had just a, I don't even remember what all the hell I had a front axle, just odds and stuff. Unfortunately, they are sandblasting once again today up front. So I've been kind of limited on what I can record. I want to show you guys that really cool uh, GMC cab that I got and those noses and that old Ford Super Duty, but I'm going to have to wait until he's done sandblasting. So he's probably about half done. So hopefully sometime this afternoon, I got up about 5.30 this morning. I had so much work to do since we lost power last night. I couldn't do anything on the internet. I had to send some invoices and different things like that. So I had to get up early, do all that, and get out here by seven to get him loaded because I wanted him to be loaded by the time the trucks got here to start loading cars and it actually worked out just about perfect. Just as we were finishing him up is when they got here for the first load. Oh, and I almost forgot, there were 97 aluminum wheels in that pile. And I don't know if I made it very clear earlier, what he's doing is he's dismounting the wheels, he's charging us to uh, dismount the wheels a dollar a piece, which really isn't that bad. He's picking them up, hauling them to his place, and then he's keeping all of the tires and he's gonna keep the good tires, resell those, and he will dispose of the junk tires. Okay, they're finally done sandblasting. So I'll show you guys these trucks real quick. This little Super Duty here, uh, the place where I went and bought that funky camper, this truck was there sitting out in the field, and I saw it the first day I went out there and I bought some other vehicles from him, and they said, oh, another guy already bought that. And so he had bought it for scrap, 
and pretty much anything they priced at scrap price or cheap, really cheap, he was going to buy in scrap. And so I had to buy it from the second guy and pay more than scrap. I gave him $2,000 for this truck and another truck that I haven't picked up yet. It's an old International, a half ton with a step side bed. I'll have to pick that up at some point in time, so I don't know how you want to figure it, whether I have $1,000 in each or whether I've got $1,500 in this and $500 in that or however you want to figure it up. But this is a pretty cool truck. It's a Super Duty. It's got the Super Duty scoop on it. It's a custom cab. It's got the radio in it. It's got the chrome gauges in it with the factory Ford uh, vacuum and tack gauge in it. It's not too terrible condition. I believe the cab is pretty well solid. The only rust is right here in this fender. I think both of the front fenders have some rust down there, which is unfortunate, but fenders like that are hard to find. So if somebody wanted to build one of these big fat fender trucks, it's not like you can find them just everywhere. So I think somebody will buy either this whole truck or at least all the sheet metal off of it. It does have a crunch in this door here, but uh, that's a pretty easy to knock out crunch. Tiny, tiny speck of rust right down there. So not bad at all. Very buildable cab. And then this truck here, it's kind of a shame on it. It got cut in half. Uh, this is a very nice truck, always kept in a barn. Really clean truck. The motor is supposed to run. It's got a 270 in it, still turns good. I'm sure it will run. But look inside this thing. It's got a little bit of a retina starting to form in it, but it's got a nice seat in it. The headliner's still mostly in it. Look at the gauges. They still got the original paint on them. All the plastic knobs are still on the dash. They're a little cracked, they'll fall apart, but I mean, they're still there at least. No rust in this truck. The only bad spot is right here. It's kind of crunched where somebody opened the door too far. It's got a nice chrome grill in it. Really nice truck. Now this one here, the sheet metal on this is actually already sold. That's headed to Kentucky with Terry. And I always have people ask me, what does Terry do with stuff? All he does is take what I have and he resells it. He doesn't build anything. I mean, he might build a few of his personal projects, but most of what he buys, he just resells and he used to have some scrap yards out there and he did a lot of scrapping of uh, big trucks like semis and semi trailers and just big stuff like that and then some just iron and cars and stuff like that as well and I believe he sold out most of his scrap businesses that he had and so now all he does is travel around to swap meets and resell stuff like that there he buys it from me and then he takes them up northeast where everything rots to nothing and he resells it up there he doesn't have a Facebook page he doesn't have a YouTube channel nothing like that he doesn't even have a smartphone when he first started coming here he actually had to get out the maps and trace his route out on the map that way he knew what highways to take and all that sort of stuff but that's what he does with these and actually most of these big trucks that I pull the cabs off of that's what's going on is the cabs are being resold to people because these cabs are identical to a half ton truck cab the front clips are different the whole fenders and <clears throat> excuse me hood and grill and all that sort of stuff is different my voice is giving out from all that sand with him sandblasting up there and I've been working up there all day and he's got a respirator in a suit I don't <laughs> but anyway sometimes people when they're building something they'll take something like this that has the fat fenders on it and the bigger fenders and they'll put it on something with big tires like a, a big you know ton and a half chassis off a school bus or something like that and so they don't mind the big fenders but people that are building half ton trucks buy these grain truck cabs because they're usually cleaner than half ton cabs and they replace their cab with them. And then here's the other stuff they brought in this morning. An old door, looks like an old, uh, maybe a Ford? I don't know what that is, I don't recognize that handle. Maybe a Dodge? I think Ford though. And this old visor, this nose here, it's kind of crunched here, but that'll beat out for the most part. And then like a 65 or six Chevy truck nose here. And then an old, probably 65 or six Ford truck nose here. So. Pretty good pieces. I had to pay pretty good money for them. I had to pay pretty good money for everything, but I'll still be able to make a little money on them. Sometimes it's not about getting rich. Sometimes it's just about keeping things moving, getting your foot in the door with somebody new. Plus, if I don't pay up for the stuff, they're just going to run it through the shredder. It's got to be worth their time to cut the stuff off and haul it clear over here. I was going to crush cars this afternoon, but I had a guy just call and he wants to come pick up a truck bed tomorrow. So a big truck bed, so I need to get that cut off. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I've got plenty of loads crushed to keep the trucks rolling. So, uh, I oh, the other truck should be here pretty soon, so I guess I better set a load of cars out first.
fuel line down there. That was a wild ride. Of course, I knew it was going to do it. I expected it because I knew there was a little bit of fuel left in the line. The actual gas tank was in the truck, so I knew I, I wasn't worried about a big fireball, but I knew there was going to be a little bit of a fireball come out of that. So I just went ahead and cut into it and let it explode a little bit, let it burn for a second, and then I went over there and cut it the rest of the way. Cut the frame. I think it's ready to go. I had a guy interested in this motor here, but that's been a little while back, so I'm not sure if he still wants that or not. I was supposed to get that pulled over a month ago and just now got it done. But uh, I'll get a hold of him, see if he wants it. But they're supposed to be here tomorrow to pick up the back half of this. I think they're planning on making a trailer out of it, but I really don't know for sure what the exact plan is. So I cut it long enough to where they can make a trailer out of it, if that's for sure what they're doing. Well, surprise, surprise, they actually showed up and got a fourth load. They got here at four o'clock and they actually shut the shredder yard down around four o'clock, but the drivers sometimes will run a little bit later. And he said, I don't have anything else to do. I'll come back and get another one. So he came back, got that fourth load out. The uh, third load weighed a little over 17 tons. So pretty good load. I got this Dodge set up here by the torch. I've got to cut the bed off of that. I got that Chevy taken out. I've got to put some stuff inside of that. And I've got a couple more trucks, unexpected phone call. The guy that bought this truck, that Chevy, and well, four trucks total is coming tomorrow. Or he's not, but he has a shipping company coming tomorrow to pick up all four of them last minute notice. And I don't have them ready to go yet because I wasn't expecting them for a week or two. Plus, I'm going to be loading trucks again all day tomorrow. Plus, I need to crush some cars. So tomorrow is going to be absolutely insane, crazy busy. I'm actually out here pretty late now, and I would just stay here and work all night if I could. But I have some other stuff going on tonight, so I've got to go do that. So definitely stay tuned for the next one because there's going to be a lot going on. This one was pretty fun, loading those vehicles inside that box trailer this morning. <laughs> that was pretty wild. I'm not getting much crushed though. Like the whole point of me coming out here and working nonstop was to get stuff crushed. But I am getting stuff gone, I guess. Like getting these, I got two trucks gone this morning. I'm about to get four trucks gone tomorrow. Terry's coming back Monday to pick up two or three trucks. So I guess stuff's leaving. Just I like it when they're leaving, you know, 10, 15 at a time in dumpsters. <laughs> But anyway, I'm just rambling now, so I will let you all go. Like I say, definitely check back for the next video. This has been a really fun series for me to make. It's going to be a ton of work to edit. I haven't even started editing the first one at this point of recording this. But that's okay. It's going to be worth it. This is going to be a lot of fun. We will see you on the next one. As always, I hope you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day. And remember to get out there, find an adventure. We'll see you next time.